Thank you for welcoming me uh, all the way down from Bali uh, from the German part. Um, I will be a little bit more, let's say, practical, or I tried at least, so um, um, I won't go into all the details. Um, basically, as a, as a technology provider, so I will provide you an update on the latest Office 2019 uh, and Windows version, which this makes the cities more livable. Um, no, that's not be the case. So um, basically, everybody knows what's going on in the technology space. So these are the mega trends you, you heard already and you hear everywhere and you're going to hear almost uh, even more in the, in, the, in the couple of years. Um, this is here. And, and technology is not any matter issue. I think uh, that has been proven so far and will be proven even more that technology is there and won't go away and will be even developed further and faster. Something that has changed in the recent year and will change is that everybody has now access to the latest technology. So technology at the latest stage will be democratized or is already. And this is a dramatic change. As you can see, everybody can now build up a Internet of Things network can using cloud computing with AI components and everything that's available at your fingertips. So the speed of, of innovation is much more faster than has been in the past. So technology, I always say, is not anymore the issue. So the question is what we do with technology and how we cope with the frameworks around technology. I always say, take two bottles of wines, lock in five people, and they come up with a great idea, and you can build it because technology is there. So that's thick mark from my side. So what is more a challenge, and that's what we particularly also fear, uh, see as a multinational American company, um, is more about how do we handle all that stuff. So these are the topics and discussions we have currently with clients when we talk about smart city, but not only at smart city in, in general, basically all around technology. As we mentioned also before, um, how do we work on this stuff? So like we can have a law or network, private, built, but when it comes to reliability, if you're on a health sensor over a privately built network, is that really something you want to um, trust in and say, well, my health rate will be managed by someone else out there? So a lot of questions that needs to be asked and needs to be managed and needs to be kind of, um, well, managed with an SLA, let's say it that way, if it comes to really a fundamental basic service of a city, for example. So do I really rely on, 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 a, on, a, on a public infrastructure? These are all questions that need to be asked. And this is, I took the slides from, from, from our internal panic department <laughs> um, just to show that. So technology is here, and these are, for example, the questions we ask ourselves as a company when we talk about artificial intelligence. How can we adopt artificial intelligence, which is at a really early stage today, but nevertheless, these are the questions we have to ask because we can do a lot of stuff already with it, but the question is, how can we make sure that all those components on the left side are taken into consideration? So what I want to say in this, in this area, coming to a smart city, and I will not focus on the sustainable, sustainability in particular, but more in a general ways, and that's the discussion we also see when we talk to cities, particularly here in Switzerland, which is my role, is um, how is technology adopted to bring some value at the end of the day to myself as a taxpayer, as a citizen, who lives in a city, in Winterthur, for example. And that's where, from my point of view, we are, we are today. We have a lot of siloed solutions that have been piloted, have been tested as proof of, of concepts, as, as, as pilots. But there is not much out there which is really running in a, in a, in a productive way as an end-to-end -end approach. It's still in the, in, the, in the development phase, and, and that's something we, we probably have to change. And the question is here, what we have to do and what are the parameters that we have to work on to make sure that all those nice concepts and those nice projects will come to real life and not just on a, on a pilot or, or, or the allotment phase. And that's basically what I see when I talk to, to majors in other cities, but also to smart city heads in other cities. They stock somewhere at the point where, from the theoretical point, uh, they have to move to the practical and to really to the to real world point to make those solutions and those cases really practical, available on the, on, the, on the market, let's say it that way. So we have a lot of siloed solutions today in the market. Everybody has tested smart parking, has tested smart lightning, has smart water measurements. Everything is there. But what's really the value for me as a taxpayer? Where do I see where my money is invested? And that's what I think is 
at the end of the day questions we have to ask ourselves because only this for a major gives traction in certain topics. If you don't have the money, if you don't have the, the visibility where this money goes, even it's just a small thing, but you need to get the guys with the money at the end of the day, the guys that decide and make the things big, like the account we mentioned, we need to create some, some rumor about it. And if you don't have the rumor, there will be no traction on all those topics. So we need to have not the enthusiastic people, they are anyway in, the geeks, let's say it that way, from a technical perspective, but we need to have also the general public in it. And that's what I see always in the discussion is where we lack the methodology or at least the approaches. And what I try to build up is kind of a, of a citizen or I call it customer map because actually we have to look at this from a city perspective. Um, like, like a commercial company. So how can we attract our customers, our citizens in that case, to use and to be fan of what we're doing? And it's, it's, it's not getting more complicated, but just to show the, the two angles. One is, where is the view from a city towards their citizens when it comes to the adoption of services? And which are the levels of a, of a city organizations that need to be covered? This is more the traditional way. And I only highlighted two or, or three elements, but for example, we have been talking about several things like climate, water, energy, whatever, and how, how do we know if this is something that someone is interested in and really keen to know more and to invest in something like this? How is a taxpayer at the next voting days looking at this? I mean, this is not only from a voting perspective, but if you don't know what they do, what they think about it, if you don't have any process to get those feedbacks back, what you're doing. We're Twittering, we are Facebooking, whatever, but is everybody listening to that channel? Do we really have a feedback on that one? Is it positive, negative, where can we change it? Or are we really able to kind of show what we planned? So we have KPIs who said, this is, wanna, this is what we want to do. And that's what we made. Everybody's talking about dashboards in smart cities. This is already an old story, but I haven't seen a dashboard on a public website where is, for example, if a winter tour, I take this example, uh, www.wintertour.com, which is the landing page of the city, of, uh, city Point Winter Tour. I would expect, there is all the links you can go, but I would expect a dashboard that says, this is what we are, where we are today, this is where we are going to, and this is where we stand to. I would like to see the cash out of the city, I would like to see the number of unemployment people in the city, and I want to see the traction of this. For purely transparent, knowing that this is a critical discussion that will be happening, but if you engage with this like this, with the citizens, there is more engagement also and more interest from the citizen side. So this is just a few examples. And connecting this to technology, you see it at the bottom, um, I would propose to kind of turn this from a data-centered discussion, so more like the technical, so we have sensors, we take the data, we make something out of it, into more citizen-centric discussion. So at the end of the day, the citizen of the city needs to see the value and need to have his buy-in without taxes or with taxes, but he needs to have the buy-in. And there are a lot of small fields in between. And knowing that this is not easy, um, I've tried to figure out if we have kind of an example that has been done already in this way. And um, I found uh, a project we have been involved with the city of Dortmund, if I'm not sure if anyone knows that one or has it already seen. It has nothing to do with sustainability in the first side of you. Um, they had a strategy, they had an organization and their thing, and they had about 120 partners involved just to do one end-to-end -end smart city solution. And the city of Dortmund decided to be the most um, social smart city. And, and I want to show you a video, and um, with that video I'm done afterwards, to, to, to kind of explain what they did to make sure that the digital divide, and, but also how we as a society will live in the future, how technology can support. And you're going to see that technology is not yet there where it should be, but you can kind of imagine where it's going to and how this is going to support um, a smart city. And here it's about elderly people. So how do we manage the, 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 the growing aging population? My grandmother, for example, how long can she stay at home? What can we do to make her stay longer at home? To reduce the costs in the health system, to make her a, a more livable um, 
the second part of her life. And this is what the city of Dortmund is doing, and they really are in the progress of rollouting this into, a, 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 into an area of city with about 60,000 people. And um, that's where they are at the moment. It's in German, but subtitled, sorry. Yeah. Can we do it now? This has been a project, it has taken a while, but it has took quite some discussions and, and that's funny-wise, everybody has the same uh, recommendations, which is perfect. Um, there are a lot of new elements in and nobody knows actually what and how and with and with whom to, together to do this all. And it's really an ongoing learning process. For example, here you have a lot of elements that have been cut it out in the first stage of the project by the data privacy officers. Uh, well, no way, data privacy never let you do that. But they were in that process that everybody has been involved in the early stage and figured out how to do this with a check mark from everybody who is involved and made it, at the end of the day, a feasible project that has been running out, that has been running through, the, through all the, the, the stages that were required. But it's, it's, it's this one that is very important. We have to kind of work faster and learn faster from each other and trial and also fail faster, I always say fail fast and, and move on. I think that's the, the most important thing when we, when we go in, this, in, the, in, the, in the next steps. So this is from my side a quick introduction. Thank you very much. <laughs>